we'll start uh, with uh, his experience because we he will be talking to us about the craft of designing a film how a film has been conceived and he take it forward into a work of art because usually the films connect to us on an emotional level so we need to discuss with an expert like shafiq on how that process is happening so we will start uh, welcome shafiq it's a great fortune to have you here with us uh, thank you thank you we are privileged so we'll Hi. start with your experience uh, because that will give us an introduction to our participants uh, of uh, doing jigar tanda double x because i am asking this specific question because uh, jigar tanda double x is a challenge in multiple ways you are recreating and already it's a sequel to a cult film but at the same time it is a unique independent uh, you, you work which stands on its own so what was the challenge that uh, you faced while working on this uh, jigar tanda double x so we'll start with that and then we'll go on to other aspects of the uh, film editing and film making part over to you uh hello everyone uh hi anand uh hi billing madam uh this is uh really interesting actually for me because you know uh to talk about something which we had done actually or uh, which i have worked on and when i'm uh when i'm sharing those experiences with people like it's just like a coffee session for me like uh, it's uh, it's very pleasing actually like any time any day if you ask me about my work i'll be very happy to share about it So this is uh, very interesting for me right now, and uh, I'll straight away get into the te- techniques as uh, we are having a limited time right now. Jyotanda is, uh, uh, I think, uh, for the people who have seen the movie, and uh, I'm not going to share any spoilers, but uh, for the people who have seen the movie, this is actually a very uh, a big scale movie. Like you know, you witness so much, and uh, it was shot in multiple places. It was shot in a wide scale. using uh, a number of crew and everything uh so uh, there are so much stories involved in the in the movie and uh, you it, it's more or less like a novel you start somewhere and you end somewhere so uh, in between you will uh, get to interact with so much char- so many characters who are coming to uh, who might have a past who might not have a past but our idea or <clears throat> the goal of an editor would be to convey each and every character properly like you know i i will have to introduce each and every character in such a fashion that you understand the characters and then you travel along with the characters and till the end when you finish the movie you will realize where the character came from what travel the character had to do and where the character landed so uh, it, it should be a circle like you know you start something you end something this uh, this should be i i i personally feel this should be the main goal of a editor like you, know, you take the story you move forward and then uh, you keep the people engaged when you travel with the story so uh, we'll go to the detail of this uh, aspect you have given us a brief outline on uh, how jigarthanda was designed so the role of editor for a, from a layman per, uh, audience perspective the role of an editor mostly remains invisible because uh, people might not understand what the role is like uh, the major part that editor as an editor plays in designing the film as a product so can you just go a bit detail into how the film is conceived and with, at which point the editor steps in and how the editor can make an impact on the uh, film as a whole you know you can start after the shoot you can start before the shoot you can start in pre production day it, it is up to us actually where you want to start my personal take is always start at the pre production stage so that you know uh, when a story Uh, when you write the story you will have a lot of scenes you will have a lot of emotions and uh, it it becomes our responsibility to cut down that whatever is necessary and what is not necessary maybe if you want to add something you can add something this thing can happen so uh, personally for me if you start in the pre production stage you can contribute so much like you know uh, with the story you have a sync with the director so that you know when the director is out for the production and when you're parallelly cutting at the same time you know simultaneously they it might be happening so you'll have a sync before uh, even the director comes and sits with you so when he's coming and sitting with you you can sure at least the 90% of the first cut would be right for you so these things will happen only if you sit in pre production stage you know when you have a discussion with the director my personal uh, thing with jigarnanda was jigarnanda uh, came to me in august and the shoot started in december so i had plenty of time to sit with the director and discuss with the script you know uh, where we can enhance where we can reduce 
So even uh, Karthik kind of sir had the same idea because he didn't want to shoot it like you know uh, drastically go for a shoot like 150 days and then you come to the table and then you cut the the whole thing. You take for six to eight hours of footage and then you come to at three hours below below three hours movie. So better than that, we save a lot of time. We save a lot of energy. We save a lot of money. Obviously, money is a business part, and uh, that that has to be done. I think in the production stage. So. Uh, for all those people who are really interested in editing, I think you should start with the process stages. So, uh, to uh, give more idea about the process of filmmaking, what happens in the pre-production where you, you, you sit down and discuss the storyline? A film happens in pre-production, the actual production and post-production. There are the three distinct uh, segments where the film is being made. So, what exactly happens in the pre-production? You conceive the film or... Yeah, preparation, uh, it's more or less like a brainstorming session. Like, you know, somebody has a dream, somebody has an idea, he shares that idea with us, and he asks, does this dream work? Does this idea work with this? And we would be saying like, uh, yes, uh, I got this idea, but I didn't get that idea. I think we can do it in a different fashion. Like, you know, you can travel somewhere else and get to that idea. So the, it's not just the editor, you, you might be have a reading session also. As well. You know, you will have the uh, whole HODs of the movie, you know, like uh, editor, uh, DOP, art director, uh, costume director. So all of these people will be there. So when you sit and have a discussion, with, like, you know, a thorough discussion, that, that, that will be actually fruitful for everyone. Like, you know, you don't have to uh, assume what is going to come. You can have a proper idea what is going to be short and what will but you'll have, but you'll have the precise work, uh, you know, graph that you'll have that, uh, that will be shared well before the pre-production stage. So it's it's like a give and take. Like you know, you you share some ideas, and we share some ideas, and 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 the whole it's like a teamwork. You know, you know, you know when the team works well, the movie works well. That happens. So basically, you'll be working on a script that has been uh, written by the maybe the director or the scriptwriter. Then you will be adding to that, or you will be discussing on that the possibilities of how to visualize it, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, see, uh, always stick to the dream, actually. Like, you know, the, the dream is the script, actually. The heart of the movie is always the script. You can't say, uh, precisely if you say, uh, this department has done more and this department has done less. It is only because the script wasn't engaging for you. So if you can keep the script precise and if you can keep the script to the core, you know, and share the script properly, some people might not be interested in narration. Some people might be like, you know, uh, they, they might be weak in narration. They will ask, the directors might ask you to read the script. So you read the script and you bounce back. And uh, this uh, to and fro, you know, this process, like uh, this will shape up actually the script. So uh, the first draft of the movie, uh, the first draft of the script, uh, and, and you are right, right? right? Yeah. Right, so, so uh, you you will understand the process. Like you know, you write the script from the script. I, I think it, it takes eighteen to twenty drafts for you to figure out what it is yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly going to the screen. So yeah. it's a tedious process. And then there is a, then there is an open space actually for you to put your baby out for a postmortem. You give it to people, and then people say, "Yeah, cut it up, do whatever you want." And then that is say, not, that that portion is not connecting. So comments like that will come up. Ah, okay. Okay. So uh, the thing is, like, you share your uh, idea into the into the space where people are sitting. Like, you know, a bunch of people are sitting around the table, and then uh, you get uh, refined. You know, like okay. you keep refining the process. You keep polishing all those pieces. Like, uh, it's more or less like a gold. You keep polishing, polishing, polishing till the fine piece comes out. So you know, this is good for the script. For, for the shoot, the shooting script is ready. When you know the shooting script is ready, you go for the shoot and then you come back. Maybe you will have changes. Might be, you might have, and uh, it, it mostly uh, you, you will have some changes because uh, what the artist does is uh, actually a mystery. Like, you, you know, you can't predict the artist. And you, the, your artist might help you in two or three, uh, what you have written in three scenes, that artist might give you in one scene. So you don't need the other two scenes. So these things might happen uh, during the post. So that happens in the production cell, right? Because that's the second phase. Correct, correct. Yeah, because as you have rightly said, like as a writer, I also I have been through this process. Like we keep on 
selling the art, the bottle for return. Because we will be having a base idea, but then uh, we'll be taking inputs from uh, people. We'll be sitting brainstorming. And then there will be areas where what we meant is being communicated or com not communicated. So we work on things like that. And before, uh, before we, the camera gets rolling on the first take, the shoot script will be ready. And by that time, uh, as an editor, you will be having a pretty good idea about the full connect, right? Full film, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you'll yeah. be traveling along yeah. with the project. Yeah, uh, I prefer to try along with the process. Like, you know, uh, I take, uh, I don't do so many films at a time because I want to uh, get involved in the process. It's like, you know, you, you make the most of it when you when you make a movie. Right? You know, movies are done only once. And uh, once the movie is shot, it's shot and you can't go back and change it unless you have a budget for issue. So it's always better you know uh, prevention is better than cure like uh, like people say like, you know you prevent all those mishaps happening before yourself and then you go with the movie and then you finish the movie in the right space okay. uh, so uh, basically uh, what you are explaining is like the technical part because what yeah. we see on the screen is a work of art to which you connect you, you connect to the characters you relate to the characters emotionally uh, but then lot many things happen till the film is projected on the screen. So uh, at that point, uh, I would like you to explain on that how that magic, that technical thing, very technical, thing, absolutely technical, you should like the position of the camera, the lighting, the acting, everything that comes into play. Uh, so as an editor, how do you place yourself when this is happening, when this magic of placing very technical thing together and creating something beautiful as an art? So where does the editor step in? Uh, like I said, uh, you know, uh, from the beginning when we have a discussion, you'll have that idea, right? Then uh, uh, once you start receiving the footage, you will receive the footage like uh, maybe in the first day or maybe uh, you call it rushes as well. So when you get the rushes, you go through those rushes, you, you watch each and every take actually. Uh, Maybe some shots might, uh, a number of takes will be there, 20 takes, maybe seven. Might, some might even work in one take. So you go through those takes and then you figure out, uh, you pick up a story from all those takes, you know, for a scene, if you have like 15, 20 shots, uh, you figure out a story from those particular shots. You you actually erase the whole thing which you read in the pre-production pre because you don't want to be pre -judgmental. Then you figure out, what you have been given on the table. Then you make uh, bits and pieces, you take bits and pieces out of it, and then you make a story out of it. And then you go back to the pre-production and you try to relate. Is this the story which I heard before? Does this have the crux of the story which I heard before? If this works, yes, we'll go to the next scene. And the process is like, you know, there is a, always, a, if you have a DOP who is always sharing with you, you know, director of photography, if he's, uh, constantly in touch with you. You can even uh, suggest a few shots like, you know, I, I prefer this shot. Uh, if you have a close shot of this particular actor or this particular insert, this might work much better dramatically and you can even remove a couple of scenes which you have. So those things throw the process yeah, uh, from the table. When you see the rushes, you and when you start the first cut, you know, you can figure it out. Uh, and uh, so, like uh, you have, been, you are you are already called your niche as a editor, but then you have an experience as assistant director, director with segment also. You have done work uh, as an assistant editor. So, uh, how how do you control these elements? Because film, the shooting process, you know, as it is, are totally unpredictable. We can never control the elements there. What is going to happen? As you have rightly said in the beginning. You cannot expect an artist to perform exactly what you have in mind. The artist may be doing something better or something that falls short of what you have in mind. So as a director, what are the things that you keep you have to keep in mind when you are working when you are working on an actual shooting process? Uh, just keep your state uh, slates clean, actually. Like, you know, don't be so pre-judgmental. Like, you know, you want if you have an idea, you just want that idea to be delivered back to you. You can't be a uh, stubborn. You can't be uh, like you know. Uh, you can say this is particularly what I wanted. You can't keep them. You know. Uh, you can't 
make them work like very tediously you can't make them work artist is something uh, like a clay uh, the clay looks good only in the best hands actually like you know if your director knows what the clay should be molded to so every artist is different some artists might be a uh, very uh, polite some artists might be it, it, it's like a uh, different characters no? like you, know, you see a lot, uh, we meet a lot of people so every person is different you you need to know what god is striking in his mind and then you uh, touch that god and make him understand some people you know uh, if you have a mic you can uh, uh, direct through the mic so this can it is something this way or that way. but some people wouldn't prefer that some people would like you getting closer to them and then you discussing with them so that is where they get the emotions you know so <clears throat> everybody is different uh, you when you hire an artist you will have the sync you know uh, uh, you you pick up an artist for a movie then you have a discussion with them then during the discussion you will know what this artist is going to deliver to you and then from the direction uh, when you sit on the direction uh, director's chair then you will understand this is particularly uh, the what the artist gives me maybe i can extract more from him or maybe this is it or maybe this is what he will give so uh, if he is a good artist you can keep extracting more and that's how you uh, you get you know when you see some movies you get surprised like uh, that art, that particular artist in other movies might be different and this this movie might be very different that is because the director has extracted more from that artist you know it's like uh, some artists are like uh, you can uh, you say that elephants have a big ears and they can see their backs right so uh, sometimes artists are like they know their powers but they they might have forgotten their powers actually because they have been doing constantly the same pattern of movies you know that there is a formula movies which they are doing then then uh, when they get a chance to uh, exhibit themselves they might use it as a very good platform and then they come up because they need a confidence to come up so uh, these things are uh, uh, direction is a very uh, tricky space uh, it, it involves because it involves people for an editor there is only involvement with the editor and machine but in terms of direction it is like you need to talk to the person you need to get back from the person so you have to be very clear with the directions that you give even if you give more direct directions the what? artist uh, the artist might be having uh, confusions so rather than sticking to so much of directions keep it very clean keep it very neat be very polite to them they'll give it back to you so at the at the editing desk uh, when you are working when you are sitting down to edit a film you will be having a rushes which will uh, so your job is to uh, create a narrative out of the rushes that is available to you because it has already been shot that is a gone home the film has been uh, can uh, so you will be creating a narrative based out of the rushes that are made available to you at the same time you keep uh, the original script in the back of your mind is that how it works correct correct uh, uh, you know you can even change narratives in the edit text like you know uh, <laughs> you can bring a scene uh, a number the scene number 25 to scene number 1 and you can bring a scene number 1 to the scene number 60 these things are possible in the edit if you know how to break these rules actually so uh, might be that there are few movies like you know uh, you can uh, uh, the, the the linear story what, what was being written has been shifted to non linear because the movie was in engaging like when you were reading this for reading the script a linear script would be very interesting but when you read when you see a linear script it might not be So, so many uh, you, you might find that uh, fascination there so it's like you uh, intercut the movie you interchange the scenes and then you make it non linear if you want to and then you come back so that there is a different narrative there is a new narrative which is happening you know uh, some shots if you reduce the shots it might look interesting <laughs> sometimes you pick uh, shots from some other scenes and then you add it here just for the sake of drama and it might work well well also so this uh, my personal uh, view is keep exciting all the time keep exciting the director all the time when you work and uh, they have the, uh, because uh, the moment you lose your excitement in any department that means your movie is flat 
you can't lose your excitement. You keep your excitement high and then you go on. So my, uh, I, what I would personally do is excite the director with what all possibilities I have in the shots, what all possibilities I can do with the music, what all I can do with the SFX and uh, cut the scenes. Okay. So Shalini has a question here. Shalini, can you ask yourself? So Shalini has uh, asked a very pertinent question at this point. So we'll uh, listen to Shalini's question, yeah. answer, and then we'll continue this. Shalini, yeah. go ahead. Hello, sir. It's it's such an honor to get, like you know talk to you at all. And I'm sorry, I was really not aware that you edited the movie Jigit Danda, and I really enjoy it on theater. So it it tells you know how uh, apart from focusing on the uh, director or even producer at times. the audience do not uh, you know pay attention to the editor or who works behind the film making process in itself uh, i am also a research scholar in central university of kerala working it on audio theory so this got me curious as to to what extent does a director's instruction influence the editing process or or is the full autonomy given to the editor alone as to because uh, let's uh for instance movies like um, mamanan or karnan uh, particularly the ones directed by mari selvaraj right they are laden with symbolism and every single shot has something to tell very pertinently so does the set director in such circumstances do they sit with you in the editing process and instruct you that this is how i want certain uh, scenes to be shown or or how does it work uh they give you the crux of the idea actually like uh for me uh what i always prefer is to have the first cut of my own <laughs> uh there are uh, directors who di- who direct as well as edit the movie with the help of an assistant mm-hmm. i personally uh, i personally don't feel i should uh, i believe in working that that particular stage because uh for me if i am being hired for a movie is because i have a creative ability to create a movie or for xi xi the audience right so what i would do is i would always get the first, uh, the first get done by myself and then i show it to the director like you know uh, most of the time it's like 80 90 95% is going to be the same the cut mm. okay uh for the for the particular scene or for the particular uh, we reel is like 20 minutes of a movie so uh, uh, so those things uh it, it is up to me to give the best possible way in the first first shot itself after that if the director feels there is a uh, you know the, uh, the there is something which has to be addressed to he will come and address the situation like uh, say for instance I, like what you said in mari selvaraj's movie like you know that uh, symbolic steps mm-hmm. you see the uh, symbolism in every movie for instance uh, yeah. i'll take the same example with uh, kathik subras previous movie like uh, one movie i worked as an associate it was irevi in irevi there is a scene uh, where two people are uh, having a conversation uh, and uh, they're trying to you know uh, canvas one person into doing a heist you know like a temple heist so uh they bring a toy along with them uh, the, uh, these two people who are coming into the frame uh, brings a toy along with them uh, for the uh, third person who they, who they came to hire because he is having a kid and that toy is a monkey a monkey which plays on uh, when, when you play the key and the monkey keeps drumming you know? so okay. this is uh, you you'll be particularly using that shot in between this conversation because these two are playing this guy okay they they two are trying to canvas this guy and he's the third guy is going to be the monkey who is be who is going to be used in the scene <clears throat> so symbolism is everywhere actually like you know you can use it uh, if you use it use it in the right space this is going to be a discussion if you don't use it then it's going to be like you know uh, it's going to be in the clouds that's it so uh, uh, editing is uh, very creative space where you can share your abilities actually like you know where you can uh, uh if you feel uh this uh with one insert what you what you say like uh, i think for karnan uh, if you see there is a donkey which is getting <coughs> there is a shot where the donkey's uh, legs are tied and the donkey is walking this is one one scene uh, 
uh, one shot which comes in a particular scene and it keeps repeating. So you feel that th those characters are being pulled back and th they're being uh, they're having that kind of an agenda, where the political agenda is available. You know, you can evidently watch it. So uh, if you use it in the right space, it makes sense. If you if you're using it in the beginning, I don't know if, if, it, if it makes sense or not. So it, it's up to uh, uh, in the chronological order. It, it is first. Uh, it's up to the editor first to use it. Then the director might uh, have a suggestion on it, and then it goes on. It's always a uh, always a healthy discussion will make a healthy. Movie. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I hope you, I, I answered your question. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense because I was under the impression that, like, the director has a lot of say in you know what goes where. But now it makes sense. Like, I get that since you mentioned chronologically, the editor does most of the part, and then you know it is up for discussion with the director. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. So to continue your question, like as a writer, when I am writing a film, uh, from my I will be having a story to narrate. But then the final phase of the film that you watch on the screen is decided by the editor. So the editor, along with in, con in con uh, agreement with the director, decides the, how the story which is being narrated is visualized, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, it's, a, uh, it's the editor's decision on how to face the narration. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. So that makes a whole lot of difference on what is being written and what is being shown on the screen, right? Yeah, obviously, like, you know, if you if you want to see uh, to be when you're reading a scene, you might need a couple of emotions to be repeated. The repeated emotions in a novel makes it fascinating for you. You don't feel it's like, oh, this is this is the same emotion which I read there. <laughs> but in a movie, visual strikes uh, much faster than uh, when you than you read, actually, in you know, words. So, you don't need uh, extra emotions on the screen. You might need one scene where you can convey the emotion. Then you cut out the rest of the two, and then it make if it makes sense, it makes sense, and you you go with the drama. Uh, there are many movies where, where towards the end, the climax has been uh, revised in a, such a fashion rather than it has been written. Because uh, uh, when you walk from the scene, uh, when you walk from scene one to scene the last scene. Uh, the the graph of the characters might be uh, demanding something else rather than uh, which is written. So you might enhance a bit. You might even come your your, your climax might even come on the six fifty nine scene rather than coming on the sixty eight scene. So you don't want the sixty eight scene there. So you finish it off with fifty nine or fifty eight, and uh, in that way you keep the movie engaging and uh, you save the movie at some point. Now. Uh, Kavya has a question to you. Kavya, are you online? Yes, sir. Kavya, please go ahead and ask your yes, question. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Before I have never met uh, in my lifetime editor, uh, uh, only I watched the uh, cinema story. I don't know about film industry. Uh, but um, what is the difference between film editing and uh, YouTube editing? Uh, how could YouTubers uh, improve their editing styles? Uh, um, that's only my question. Okay, okay. So, uh, film, uh, basically everything is uh, storytelling, you know? Okay. And uh, uh, you, when you watch a movie, you don't stick to the artist and unless you are glued to the story. If you don't like the story, you're not going to watch any actor's movie. Just because, for the sake of an artist, you don't watch a movie. I, I personally feel, unless you're very much you know, you know, there is a godly uh, devotion to that artist. You, you won't be watching that movie. So, story always plays an important role. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're editing a film; it is a documentary. It can be a, it can be even a, a, what do you say? And even a, a stage show. Even if the stage show is not cut properly with a proper drama, this is not going to be. This is not going to work. People are not going to see it. So, uh, film is uh, a theater films. Uh, your advantage is like you have to buy a ticket, you have to get into the screen, and then you have to see the movie. So it takes a period of time. Like you know, you you have two hours or two and a half hours or three hours to keep the uh, audience glued to the seat. So this space, this three hours is particularly given to you, like for the filmmaker, to make uh, the people engage. 
right but in terms of youtube in terms of insta reels in terms of facebook videos you don't have that liberty people have options of choosing the next video if your video is not working well so uh, keep uh, keep your videos very precise when you're editing reels or uh, youtube videos you know you have to be on to the point you can't drag it just because you like the content yeah there are oh, sometimes what happens is you might like a subject and you might just get uh, you know carried away with the subject and you might be explaining it so much you don't want that to happen when you're editing a youtube video or in, in, in story keep it very precise whatever they want you, you want to share you share it in a very short span of time and then you move to the next thing if your drama is working if your uh, storytelling is perfect i'm sure that uh, the people are going to watch the entire uh, entire video because you know this is the same logic which we use uh, during uh, trailer or uh, teaser cuttings and you only have 2 minutes or 2 uh, minutes or 1 minute to you know excel the audience section so under uh, so the first 10 seconds of a video is very important you keep it very uh, engaging you you give them what they want to see or what they want to hear and then you make them glued to that video and then you figure then from there you take it to the next stage like you know then you give them space like you know it's like uh, let's say uh, there's a so shocking revelation or something which you're giving in the first piece so you you might be interested in that piece like you know why is this going to happen or what is it telling then you get stick to that point and then uh, the narrator can slowly take you into the story then he can explain it and then he can finish it off so youtube video should be very uh, for uh, according to me youtube video should be very precise and uh, and uh, especially in this generation like you know people are very much fond of reels which are very uh, short uh, you you only have short period 30 seconds 40 seconds and people are used to it so anything beyond that point is uh, psychologically being cut away from the audience actually so you keep it very precise and keep it sharp uh, any apps uh, do you uh, no, suggest uh, for uh, youtube editing any apps uh, uh, apps uh, the... to, according to me uh, yeah softwares right you you asking about the softwares ah, yes, or apps, softwares right? yeah yes, <laughs> please use any software of your convenience it doesn't matter you you can use uh, paid software you can use freeware you can use even watermark softwares it doesn't matter what you what software you use unless uh, see uh, uh, like i said before whenever you edit uh, stuff whenever you editing a piece the story matters the story is the only thing which matters even if you don't want to edit and put up a video a short video without editing that also works because the story might be interesting but you know single short videos which are being interesting fascinating you know so uh, please uh, go ahead uh, just google whatever the softwares are available for you because uh, uh, why i'm saying this is because this is a very uh, uh, when, when you come into softwares it is about economical stuff like you know you will uh, sometimes you will have to pay for it sometimes you don't have to pay for it freeware that are available i i'm using avid right now uh, i'm using professional avid software which i have to purchase for a year but avid also provides a, a first uh, first avid media composer first there is a software which is free where you can learn your editing and all those stuff uh, which you can't uh, you can't export the video but you can use it for studying purpose so uh, feel free to use uh, any softwares as long as it is very comfortable for you and the story works well so tools are not important the idea that the narration has to be there it has to capture it has to communicate i guess uh, correct uh, yeah. you, you know you can you can blame your tools any time but uh, you can blame the story any time okay. so in this connection i think edin uh, has a question edin are you online thank you sir uh edin has posted a question uh, at which point do you decide to make a cut as an editor uh, do you have some rules in mind or you just go with the moment and uh, when you take take a decision that this shot ends here or this shot is to be repeated so when do you take that decision it's all intuition actually basically there are two things to editing the art of editing has to one is the creative part one is the science part uh, the science part is how much time you want uh, the shot to be registered in your eyes actually 
like you know some people use it like eight frames uh, you know uh, to be uh, i'll explain how it is in the real time if you have 24 frames uh, that come come that gives you one second of a shot so uh, probably right now what people uh, what uh, in the, the science is like eight frames gives you uh, time for registering a shot you might forget it in the later part but at least you will you will uh, you'll see the shot within eight frames so uh, it is up to the story actually like you know if you have a fast pacing story where you are having chases where you are having action sequences where you are having uh, a highly you know a drama which is going in a fast pace like you know a couple of shots couple of scenes are happening at the same time you know intercuts and parallel cuts are happening at that point uh, maybe you you might have to reduce the uh, short durations but uh, if you are having a scene where your drama is you know taking part and your actors are giving you wonderful uh, emotions and wonderful performances you might not want to cut it early because if you cut it early they want the audience might not connect with the scene because you uh, say for instance there is an emotion scene where your artist is explaining so much of stuff to and uh, you cut it to something else uh, well before it because it doesn't feel uh, uh, because of the signs uh, like you know there is only 4 seconds or 5 seconds you, you require for the shot and then you go to something else and then you come back if that scene doesn't work it is because you cut it before the emotion was taken into the audience because you need to watch the performance of the uh, artist most of the scenes like you know <clears throat> uh, if you see all this uh, uh, there are movies where uh, mamuti mohanlal sir all those people the all those highly professional artists you know though they work in such a fashion like they take the whole scene to them and they work it so you uh, the moment you say action they'll start uh, performing the character and they'll only come out when you say cut so some people might take it so long they can uh, they have the ability of doing single takes like you know for 1 minute 2 minute etc uh for example in this movie jigadanda double x there is a shot which is more than one minute actually for uh, sg suriya sir so suriya sir and that dy- the dynamics of the shot is uh, he moves from one place he comes to another place and then he walks around the character and the camera moves around him you know and he performs along with the character and he has so the the trick there is to keep his uh, performance into the camera like when the camera is moving he also has to move he also have to face the camera he has to perform the camera and he shouldn't forget the dialogues so if i am cutting in between this to something else people get distracted like oh i was seeing something else there what happened to that character there i i, I want to see something else there uh, I, i want to go back to that character you know the moment people think that in a, uh, you know uh, if it's coming down as a meter you know or when you see the visual there is a problem that means you shouldn't cut there you should have cut after the shot after the performance was delivered sometimes you don't want that performance to complete because you know not every artist is perfect sometimes you might have uh, mistakes which are happening uh, during the cuts so you might have to cut out and then have to cut back which is uh, you have to do it in a very smart fashion like you shouldn't know the cut as cut is taking place you know uh, it should be a part of the seamless edit which is happening So, i hope uh, yes sir i got it, I it is, thank you sir thank we, you sir. Uh, okay. thank you thank you so uh, uh we we talked earlier uh shafiq you said the, the narration the story is the key because we need to connect okay. to the audience uh, we need to communicate that story to the audience so uh here shweta singh has a very relevant question uh shweta are you online can you ask your question because that is essentially related to the story and the narration part Shweta? Yes, sir. I'm Shweta. here. Yeah, please go ahead and ask your question. So, I was asking, like, um, when we read a book, first of all, when uh, you were saying that you write a script and um, you give it to the uh, director or then there is a story the director has to show and he has in his mind that how he's going to put that script and how he's going to show. 
but when it comes to a uh, book adaptation um, the readers already have a story built inside their mind and they already visualize it so uh, when it comes to adapting that movie and editing editing that part of the movie uh, how you see like what goes in your mind of editing that because already and because uh, many times um, we don't feel like um, the like we think that the book version was more better and we can connect it from there i think do i make sense yeah i, I yeah i i, I think uh, i'll just rephrase the question is what you're asking is adapting a book into a cinema how how it works right <laughs> yes yes and how much a script is different from the book see uh, there are two aspects of it actually like you know when you read a book the the visuals the artist you can praise anyone the visual is uh, uh, your freedom you can use the visual visuals you want to see you can say for instance there is a, the uh, the writer has written on a beach the artist is walking with his legs uh, barefoot on the sand you can imagine a beach of your liking like you know you can make it san francisco you can make it juhu beach you can make it marina beach yeah. which you want but when you make uh, when you make a movie it is someone else's vision actually like you know a director's vision so uh, the director's part is you know, the writer or the director who is doing the work his part is to make it as seamless as possible like, you know yeah. like you but to be very uh, close to that uh, uh, the the book which has been written so uh, what usually happens is when you adapt a book they only take the core of the book like you know there might be a couple of scenes uh, from the book uh, a couple of stories which might have interested them and that they might have picked uh, that they might pick from there and then they might make a use of it in the movie like you know uh, uh, like i said uh, when you use a uh, Uh, some book starts linearly uh, but uh, for a movie the linear portion might not work you'll have to go for a non linear version for the movie to work because a uh, book is something which you can read any time and uh, keep yourself engaged to but movie is something which you'll have to give you two hours especially at that point of time and then you will have to watch you can't cut away from the movie and come back so the the challenge is more when you make a movie because uh, books if you read a book you can uh, i think uh, it takes hours to finish a book but the filmmaker's challenge is to make it within 2 hours actually and hence so many uh, web series you know netflix is coming out with so many web series which is adapted by a book which comes in 4 hours 6 hours 8 hours 10 hours and beyond 10 hours also you know? so uh, a book is very detailed a book is a novel is very detailed you know when you uh, coming to a movie you can't show so much details you will have uh, you are constrained to a period of time so within that period the time limit you will have to phrase everything and then you will have to bring the character so sometimes what usually happens is in a book you might see the character growing from you know from birth uh, till the destiny but in a movie you can't show the birth of the character because you'll have to show it from the start uh, from the midway and then you will have to convey it somewhere else so a uh, movie is very challenging in terms of uh, book writing because of the constraint the the time limit which you have because that that time that particular time if you can't engage your audience then you have a problem with the movie is what i feel so uh, have i answered your question sir yes sir yes sir yeah so you have mentioned how the how differently a film uh, approaches a theme uh, rather than a book because book uh, when you are setting you can just need to give an idea a pointer on a scene but then the film has to be very specific on that so here akshay has a question uh, related to this akshay are you online yeah yeah i'm online hi yeah please go ahead and ask your question yeah yeah so my concern is see uh, film like jigar tanda which is very layered and it's uh, an intense film like even if you watch it theater i have seen it like three times already it's like it's, it's a crazy visual treat right so as a film of that sort to be a editor of that film once you like you know once you are assigned the task of an editor are you uh, like you know do you visit your sets very occasionally or very randomly you know to have your 
to to you know to have a better output or is is it all together a post production work that you put in a lot of effort in your post production and you sit there and you know you have your work with your director and your associates or assistants or i'm very new to this film like very fascinated by how people make films especially non linear films so i'll come with uh, a couple of things i'll have addressed before uh right, during a shoot right now nowadays like there is a possibility of using a spot editor at the shot all right at the scene. all right so uh, the moment a shot is taken and it is being directly captured into a laptop where you can edit it and show it to mm-hmm. the director that is one possibility which is happening right now and okay. uh, I, i for my movies i don't uh, i don't suggest short, uh, spot editors for my purpose i only suggest the spot editors if they want to if the director needs any uh, takeaways for the continuity uh, to see that costume continuity or that uh, makeup continuity whatever it is like you know if it is working that's it and i always uh, ask my directors not to judge the story on the spot edit because the spot edit is a very rushed pace where you have limited time to make out the story and so there is one piece where uh, Uh, the director can use the spot edit for his convenience just uh, you know uh, you increase the uh, like you know uh, long back uh, like you know 20 years or 30 years back uh, uh, assistant directors used to write down continuity like you know the hero's hair used to be from here to here these were the points noted down and then they have to reflect it back uh, some might even draw pictures of what was, what were the basic curves you know like for the continuity so now it is very advanced when you come to the digital era so you can just take a snapshot for the continuity you can keep an edit uh, spot edit of the continuity and hence you can you know uh, help your director out uh for me uh, my personal thing is i never go to the sets because uh, uh i personally don't want to be influenced with anything from the set actually like you know you uh, for instance say for instance there is a shot which has been in an eight hours uh, call sheet call sheet is uh, the time period from where we start work like you know 6 to 2 we you say right that is called call sheet in a movie so uh, let's say for a, in a call sheet of eight hours uh, the a shot was taken with the preparation with an effort of 4 hours to 6 hours and only one shot was taken for me when it comes to the edit table i don't know it took 6 hours or 4 hours to take that shot i only know there is a shot like any other shot which has been taken for uh, which has been taken in one minute also so sometimes for me that one minute shot is more important than this 6 hours <coughs> effort shot so i straight away cut it away I, I take it out and I keep the one minute shot. Right? This is because my understanding is that the story works with that one minute shot rather than that six hours tedious shot. But if I was in the set, I might get influenced with that emotions of all those technicians, all those crew, all those people, all those artists who are waiting for six hours with the makeup. And I would feel, oh man, I shouldn't let them down. I have to keep the shot there. So it's always uh, my 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 preference is not to go to the set and we just uh, an editor might it's better if an editor sticks to the table and uh, figure it out because I, I there was a time when I went uh, <coughs> for every day for a Padavat movie you know uh, it was directed by my friend so I went every day up to the set and I was sitting there and sometimes I felt like I was there, there is even an advantage like you know you can suggest if you want a shot you can such as right away and you can get it back that also happens there but uh, what happens is it challenges your creativity and the point and the what happens is your creativity and the director's creativity would seem like so i will be personally traveling with the director but if i'm sitting out only in the table and i'm not going to the direction set you have two different narratives one is the director's narrative one is the editor's narrative and the uh, best part is Uh, taking best parts from each of them and then placing it together and then moving forward the other one only gives you one line so you have to stick with this that is what happens i i i admit, i i feel it is constrained this one i prefer much better because uh, the number of stories you can make it is much better i think yeah uh, so basically 
basically how 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 it explains how differently different narratives can come together in creating a new uh, new entirely different new narrative and a new experience visual experience uh, so it works for uh, maybe the listeners who are mostly literature students it works where they are doing research where they can work on multiple narratives and create a work form that is much more than that so uh, you you said uh, something you said you prefer to work from your table where you can create your narrative you can have your choices you can that is that may be different from the narrative created by the uh, actual shooting process so in this connection bijoy has a question uh, bijoy are you online yes sir i'm online yeah bijoy i think your question has something to do with what chafi uh, has just now explained so go ahead with your question yeah yeah he explained actually but still i'm asking for the sake of all the audience here so how often do you shy away from the conventional editing techniques and uh, do you often have the creativity to do something of your own something that you felt the creative spark we always have we always have the creative spark we uh, uh, like i said before in the first in the sessions <clears throat> beginning i i take the first cut as my own version like you know uh, i do the whole creative stuff there and uh, bring a new uh, if there is a new narration which i can bring into it i bring it there and then i show it to the director and if the director is convinced if the director feels my version is better than his version in that particular scene we go with that scene so uh can i i i i'm sorry what, what what do you mean by conventional narration can you explain it to me better uh well you know from the beginning of film we all create new stuff now new editing techniques new ways to set up the shot camera angles and when such films become popular they become the textbook ones which most people follow and as right now we are at the place where movies have become so different yet so similar from the past time so i'm asking you if you have the creative liberty to bring in new techniques that you find like uh, there are many new directors who set up such new shots like lijo josh pelseri he comes to the set he finds something interesting and he does it right away without following the textbook so i'm asking you if you guys also do the same yes obviously uh, that is one place where we enjoy ourselves huh? like uh, uh, see basically uh, i don't think anybody working in the film industry is because he has to work in the industry he, he is he chose this industry because he wants to you know flourish that the creative part of him and or i i believe all those film makers which you see around they use the same thing like, you know uh, uh they adapt they even uh, improvise uh, to the uh, shots or uh, scenes which they are shooting as well as an editor can improvise whatever it is like you know uh i'll give you an example of uh, this pre- the, the latest jigadan nada black movie like there is an interval block shot pre interval block shot uh it happens in a theater and uh, my understanding was the director's point was what was written was in the theater there is a kinti street movie running and the actors are performing in front of the kinti street movie uh, in the theater on the stage this is what was given to me so it was my uh, belief like if i can use a particular scene from a king tester movie which is uh, which can connect both the scenes you know uh, what is happening for for those protagonists and what is happening in the king tester movie if i can use both uh, with a sync this might work even much better so uh, like uh, you you have a lot of movies like like the real thing you you have a collection of movies inside your head so you keep uh, brainstorming like you see which scene which scene i'll take this scene okay you put it there so for me uh, which came to my mind was uh, for few dollars more there is a scene in the the, uh, the last stand up where uh, the, the characters come no so that was one thing which came into my mind because there is a chime which is there is a ring and that uh, the any american score is there that was always kicking in my mind because the rhythm of the scene which was shot was the same as the rhythm of that particular Clint Eastwood movie so uh, i felt okay let's let's just put this uh, track here and figure it out how it comes and uh, i i i was very shocked to see the result actually because it was 
it just worked marvelously I, that was very magical because i didn't need any uh, music from the musical support from the uh, music director because that they uh, the whole thing was come from the scene actually and the entire scene was carried out with that particular music and with that particular scene and there are even dialogues which comes in that scene uh when uh, uh, the villain character throws the gun down he says pick up your gun colonel he says and it was synced to the same scene which are shot uh, on the theater uh, which we shot so it, that both synced and every time it came uh, for a one particular uh, scene uh, one uh, crux moment in that scene uh, a dialogue which was uh, played in that uh, Clint Eastwood movie was syncing with this scene like, you know uh, uh, poor choice uh, uh, there was one I, I forgot that uh, the dialogue it was like uh, there was another dialogue then uh, uh, there are a couple of dialogues which, uh, if you if you watch the movie you will understand if you closely watch the movie you will figure it out or oh, this thing these nuances have enhanced that scene actually so <laughs> creative work freedom is something which we all like uh, I, I don't think anybody likes their hands to be tied and both so uh, especially in movies I don't think that works brilliant that was a brilliant example that you have given the how how different two different films from different ages sing together and then create a magic of a new thing new experience brilliant so uh like uh over the period the process of editing my have changed like uh for example the french new way or the new wave school filmmaking they stuck to the realistic thing whereas in 2023 where you are doing the work you have this freedom of using a film clip or a moment or a sequence from another age and sing it with uh, the real actors so the real and the real life happens in a on the screen sir so uh, how much has the art of editing come from uh, the masters who have uh, led us in uh, french new wave or uh, or, or, or a, a new wave uh, editing uh, filmmaking process to the contemporary thing how much do you feel have we moved on I think uh, <clears throat> the blessing for us right now is we have uh, we can go, go back to those classic movies for references. <laughs> we can go for lessons. Uh, my personal take, I'll tell uh, all of the people around uh, who are in this meeting, I'll say is if you are very interested in doing movies, if you want to be a passionate uh, filmmaker, Keep watching movies, keep watching movies, keep watching movies, keep watching movies, keep watching movies. Keep watching movies. Only, only this is one thing you want to do in a constant, this is the constant battle which you will have always. Like, you know, you keep your library, like, you know, you update, update your library. It, it doesn't have to be a new movie. It can be an old movie. You take it from 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. You you see any Oscar West movie, you, you watch any Tarkovsky movies, whichever you feel, Iranian movies. Or Turkish movies, whichever you get your hands on those. Because there was a time when no other, uh, we had the limited resource, like, you know, when there was DVD, when there was VCRs, v VHS, we couldn't watch the movies which we want to watch. We didn't even know this kind of movies existed, actually. But uh, fortunately, with the social medias and uh, this online internet, these movies have come to, they, they are out there right now. So, Please watch all those movies which you can, and uh, this is one place where you will get your inspirations, when you will, where you will get influenced, where you get excited, where you will feel like making a movie. You will have your adrenaline rush. Everything comes from movies, actually. So for me, uh, for making Jigadanda was Sergio Leone movies. When it was a Pandya Western movie, when it was quoted Pandya Western, my uh, canvas was Sergio Leone canvas, like you know the vast canvas where you have a shot. There is a standoff with two people and you keep time, you give time for them to breathe in and then you make the audience feel like what is going to happen the next. You don't have to cut away to the very next shot, but you can keep the shot there and then you can make uh, the, the eagerness builds in you. You know, you, you slightly feel like your feet tapping when you, when you see two people standing with a gun and a camera. You don't know what is going to happen. So this... I, my influence personally was from Sergei Leone movies and uh, all those old movies, like, you know, since this movie is happening in 1975, 
my personal uh, reference went to straight away 1970 movies like uh, 70s and 60s movies where uh, those techniques those editing techniques used then were very cut to cut hard cut you know like uh, one shot to another shot they don't use anything else apart uh, maybe there is a slight uh, dissolve which may they, they might have used other than that they have used any split uh, split edits any uh, fancy cuts any uh, rotoscopy cuts nothing they have used they, they they were just such beautiful movies made even now when you watch those movies these are like bibles when you watch them I, i love ten commandments i love uh, ben hur these movies if you watch these are uh, for this particular movie these were my bibles actually like you know not even one shot uh, i for I, i never i, I didn't forget a, a shot from ben hur uh, it was a 3 hours movie i i still remember every shot from then i can remember every shot from uh, sergey leonin movies because they give the time for you to breathe the shot you feel the shot you you take those emotion inside and then you become the character you you don't feel like an outsider when you're watching a clint eastwood movie when you don't uh, when you're watching a good pan and ugly you feel like you are set up in that space you are one of those you are working in one of those saloons you might be a host boy or something so that is an emotion which they found very uh, you know they wanted to make audience sit in the screens not outside the screens so my personal uh, feeling was to make the same emotions you know uh, rather than cutting it to the the present commercial cut is like make a movie in 2 hours 2 hours 15 minutes which was very possible with rajigar ganda but i didn't want that to happen because i want people to experience a movie in theater because uh you keep watching a movie in small screens you don't feel that emotion but when you watch such kind of canvas in a big screen in a in a theater screen you feel that you're sitting along with them so uh, uh my inspirations were from there i hope possibly any anybody who is very much interested in making movies please go watch movies and get inspired from masters i i, I don't know it, it can be new master it can be an old master it can be anybody but please watch movies and get yourself inspired Okay, so, uh, Shafiq, thank you. We have uh, we have passed the one hour. Uh, we have been a, just been a very engaging session. So, uh, just before we wind up, uh, can we just give some uh, idea to the participants because they, these are all young uh, aspirant storytellers, narrators who want to <clears throat> come up with their story. So, uh, how was your personal journey? How did you become? I when did you choose to become an editor? how did you find that you are uh, you want to be an editor and how was your personal journey and what are the challenges that you had and how competitive is this field right now so you gave a pretty good idea about what is happening in the field of editing right now so the participants would be interested in knowing what can they do to if they want to get into more details so how was your personal journey and your becoming an editor as a successful editor at that Uh, will help them to make a choice regarding their own career so probably we will have the session wind up with that on that not uh, giving them an idea about editing okay uh, see i was just uh, a normal <coughs> a very normal guy like you or or, or you know who is in this meeting i didn't have this idea of making a movie when i was young uh, i just watched all the terminator movies jackie chan movies all those things but now when you see all those things i am not saying those, those are bad movies I'm, i'm just saying those are amazing movies but those are the movies which are only available at that time i never knew i would become a filmmaker then but uh, late at, at later point of time now when i look back i understand those were the stepping shoes for me like you know all these movies which i was watching in my past like i, I remember uh, i was 5 years old when i watched lal salam in theater uh, when i watched papayar sundam appu's in theater which was these two movies still uh, is there in my mind because i i, rem- uh, I watched them when i was 5 years or 4 years old i i just remember the glimpses of those movies which i watched in a theater so uh, these things you know like uh, what was, these are the small investments which you do in your life uh you don't know what it will take or where it will take you to but if you have the fascination for a movie if you are interested in a movie keep watching movies 
and it will take you somewhere at one point of time. I entered a college for learning visual ethics. And uh, by the end of first year, I was very pretty much sure I was, I was not interested in visual effects and I wanted to do filmmaking. And filmmaking is where that code strikes actually, like, you know, that is one place where you can enhance your storytelling. So uh, all the departments, I don't know, uh, there are a number of people in this meeting. Everybody must be interested in each and one of other departments. Like, you know, some might be interested in editing, some in direction, cinematography, costumes, art, whatever departments you are, please make be a, please make one sure one thing clear in your mind because whatever work you're doing, you are telling a story. If you're a costume designer, you're telling a story. If you are a makeup artist, you're telling a story. Please don't divert from the story which you're supposed to tell. Please don't uh, take it very personal uh, space. Uh, personally, like, you know, you want to enhance your work only for the sake of your work. Please stick to the story where you're working. Please stick to the narrative plot where you're working and uh, tell the story as the story is deserved to be told. Just do justice to that story and definitely your work is going to be highlighted at some point of time in your career. So, uh, uh, story storytelling is the only thing uh, which you need to focus when you're making a movie. Uh, you, you can do anything. You can do uh, any department. You, know, you, you, you can direct a movie. You can do whatever it is like. Even if it is cooking, cooking videos. Cooking videos also is uh, a trend right now. But if your storytelling in a cooking video is very interesting, that video is going to be highlighted, right? So whatever, uh, Insta is like some, somebody asked me about Insta reels, somebody, uh, YouTube videos, whatever it is. Storytelling is the only thing which will make you engaged with you, within you and your audience. So make sure your stories are to Make sure your stories are heard. Make sure your stories are viewed. Make sure your stories are very really justified. And please be honest. Please be sincere in your effort. It might take time. It might take time for you to bloom. It might take time. Uh, for me, it took 10 years to sit, 10 to 13 years to sit in this chair right now. 15 years through through my Euro college education. You know? So this will happen, but you just need the patience. Be patient. Be honest with your work, and you will definitely be there where you want to be. Because the dreams always come. Thank you, Sophie. That's an amazing uh, winding up line, a conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that this will help uh, the participants who are students of literature. Uh, they are narrators on their own right. Uh, thank, thanks a lot for spending more than uh, it's nearly one and a half hours you have spent with us. You gave us so many observations which are insightful, not just into the art of editing, but into the entire creative process of making a film. Uh, we are indeed blessed to have you here. You, you took time out to share your experience, your vision into it. We thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful life. Be happy always. Do your movies. Tell your stories. This is all you can do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. How beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Shafiq. It was really, really wonderful to listen to that uh, genuine, that, that simple, uh, you know, what a teacher you are, I was thinking. You, you, you are so uh, brilliant in what you've said. Thank you so much. There were so many things that inspired me as a teacher also in what you said. I'm sure a lot of students here um, are interested in films, uh, but they may not yet have a career in films. But the solution to that also, you have said, watch, 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 watch more films. Somebody was asking, um, what is the importance of reading? Uh, you don't see a written text, a printed text, and a film text as entirely different things. Uh, they, they are so integrally related. I'm sure uh, as much as the visual text, reading also helps us to expand our mind, to visualize things. Uh, it's a whole a hybrid experience, I guess. Thank you very much. I'm so happy that our students and me got this opportunity to listen to you. Uh, wish you all the best throughout your career. I am sure there is there are miles to go. Uh, wish you all the best from all of us. Thank you very much. Yes, and we look forward to seeing more films from you, Shafiq. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. I hope I can excite you all. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.